these are the basic tools that you're going to need. You'll need a soldering iron, uh, preferably in the 20 to 40 watt range, and you can get them with a broad tip or with a fine pointed tip as well, uh, whichever you feel would be uh, easier to work with. Um, I use both depending on the situation. Then I use these little clamping um, helping hands. Uh, they have alligator clips on the end. Um, what I do is wrap the ends of one alligator clip in some electrical tape so that the uh, sharp edges don't damage the wire that I'm working with. And then of course you'll need a set of um, or a pair of wire cutters. Uh, tweezers are always handy. Needle nose pliers and tinning flux. What tinning flux does is it allows you to apply a blob of solder to the side of a component like this uh, potentiometer and then solder wires to it. Um, this is part of the ground chain. So um, the tinning flux will um, help that solder adhere better to a wider, flatter surface. You just apply it with a Q-tip and then heat it up with your soldering iron and hit it with a dab of solder and you're good to go. Okay, I think the most important part of wiring up your guitar is to have a schematic available. Um, I downloaded this one from guitarelectronics.com. They have a huge number of um, schematics available and uh, they're a great starting point uh, for wiring up a guitar. Um, all different kinds of options. And plus they sell all the components that you would need, the, the pots and the switches and capacitors and jacks and so on. In order to simplify the process of wiring up the controls, I try to do as much of the work outside of the control cavity as I possibly can. So what I do is I take a piece of tracing paper and I'll trace out the shape of the control cavity along with the holes where the controls will mount. Now I can take a look at my schematic and figure out how much wiring I can do outside of the guitar. Then I can cut the wire to length and that way it keeps everything clean and makes it easier to solder up the connections. And speaking of wire, basically what I use is your garden variety um, 22 gauge copper stranded PVC insulated wire. This stuff works great. It, it, uh, it's inexpensive. It's readily available at most any electronic store or hardware store. And um, you can get a big roll of it and that'll last you forever if you're building a lot of guitars. Um, typically I use two different colors. I'll use a red for the uh, positive signal path and then I'll use black for the ground path. That way I keep my connections clear and easy to understand. I cut each wire to length, strip a quarter of an inch off the ends, twist the copper strands together, and then use solder to tin the ends of the wire. Tinning the leads makes it much easier to connect the wire to the controls. You just simply have to place the soldered end into the part of the control where you're going to solder it, and then just touch it with a hot soldering iron. The solder will melt and uh, adhere everything to the control. Then if necessary, you can go back and add a little bit more solder to firm up the joint. This is how I solder the ground wires to either the side or the back of a pot. First thing I do is I smear on a little bit of flux with a Q-tip. Then I take my hot soldering iron and I place that against the, the flux until it starts to melt and sizzle. As soon as that happens, I'll feed in some solder, creating a blob which will adhere to the side of the pot. Now I can attach my ground wires to that blob of solder. If you're doing several wires at the same time, it can be a little bit tricky to get everything to, to hold down, but it's not too difficult. Once I've done all the wiring I can do outside of the control cavity, I'll install the pots and the switch into the back of the guitar. It can be a little bit tricky because it's a tight fit. But at this point, the only thing that will be left to do is to solder up the ground from the bridge and the, and the wires from the pickups.
Here I'm going to solder the ground wires from the pickups to the back of the pots. Again, I use the flux so that I can solder on a blob that the uh, ground wires will connect to. When connecting two wires together, I'll place them side by side, twist the pair together. Then I'll solder the two. Now if I leave the joint just the way it is, it could short out by touching one of the other components or another wire. So to prevent that from happening, I'll take a small length of heat shrink tube and slip it over that joint. Then I'll use the hot soldering iron to shrink that tube down so it fits tightly onto the wires. That'll protect the joint from shorting out. Last but not least, don't forget to run a ground wire from the bridge to the back of one of your pots. And now for the moment of truth to see if it works. <laughs>